Richard, you mentioned how your experience with your mother's dementia really lit a fire and, and got you excited about trying to, to make a difference for these folks. Well, you know, the same thing happened with me and my dad's Alzheimer's disease and his incredible story of artistic creativity in, in someone who had never shown any talent for that and how it just changed his life and transformed him, gave him hope and gave everybody around him hope and inspiration. And so out of that story, Richard, is, has really grown everything that we're a part of in our, in our ministry through our foundation, Cognitive Dynamics. And one of the things that's been so uh, incredible for me is, is to um, sort of develop a relationship with you around my father's creativity and art because of the things that you've, you've done with that. And, and I thank you so much for your interest in it and for being so innovative and, and using dad's art in a, in a particularly unique way. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, this has been, a, talk about an incredible journey. Um, one of my blessings was being able to contact Danny Potts and find out that his father had done this work after he had Alzheimer's. And of course, with my concern for people here with Alzheimer's, I immediately said, uh, can you send me some of his paintings? So he sent me a whole portfolio of, Doc, of Lester Potts Jr.'s work. <clears throat> and what I did was go up and visit people, mainly in the memory care, but there were one or two in personal care, who had been diagnosed either with Alzheimer's or vascular dementia or some other form of dementia. I didn't know what was going to happen. I sat down with most times one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes a little group around a table, and I just showed them the, paper, the pictures. I never said a word. I said, I want you to look at these beautiful paintings and tell me what you see, what you feel. I was amazed. One person who had never spoke said, when he showed the picture that your father did of the boat, he said, you know, I was in the Navy. And that picture reminds me of being in the Navy. And he talked a little bit more. He had never spoke, in my knowledge, at least to me. And there was another uh, dear lady there who likes to sing. And when I showed the picture of the fence, what she said was, you know, uh, I'm fenced in here. Perfect. And she said, I'm going to sing a song. And she sang the whole song of Don't Fence Me In. I'll never forget it. She was there, you know, she was there yesterday. So that made me continue. What I would do is after they, I conducted the interview, I'd go into a room and write down what they said. It was so powerful. One man was a, was a retired doctor, and all he did was wander around up there with a, with, with, like he was still checking patients with charts. And he looked at the book and he said, I like the cover. That's all he said. But he never spoke. He went around acting like he was still a doctor, but he said, I like the cover of your father's art. And one of my favorite stories is of a dear lady who language was very garbled, couldn't understand her, but I know her person was there. Her soul was there because she always came to worship. And my wife Allison and I conducted worship there, and at the end of every uh, worship we would say namaste, which means the God in me welcomes the God in you. And this lady was always there. And when she saw the picture of the butterfly, beautiful picture, she said, you know, that's like my life. I was transformed spiritually by God. I was just awestruck. Like the lady who once said, someone asked her, what is your name? She said, well, I don't know my name, but God does. And I found more spirituality, more sensitivity to God there than I ever find in the church. I'll be honest with you. It's wonderful to see these people just emerge. In fact, this is something that spoke to me in, in one of your writings. Ring the bells that still can ring but get your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in, by Leonard Cohen. I saw that. Crack pots, minds gone, verbal, verbal language disappearing. Yet there was light there, if we took time just to listen. 